So this is huge and this is an enormous project. Jim spoke about uh, this morning about skepticism internally and, and externally. How, how do you combat that when you're looking at sinking half a billion dollars into another downtown development project? Well, I think, um, you know, actually, when this started to get some real traction, I said to Jim, I, like, I, I, it felt to me like the fundamentals of it were more compelling than what we did 22 years ago, you know, taking down an old building and, and building an arena. In retrospect, feels a lot more daunting, to be honest, than this. I mean, uh, this is very different. It's similar in that it's downtown, but it's a very, very different purpose uh, for some services that are, I think, very much needed in our community. So, yeah, I mean, it, the scale of it's significant, but, you know, it, it, what we did at True North Square was a big undertaking as well, and, and, and we managed our way through that, and, you know, and it's still got some work to do there, but... You know, it, it was, it, it, I don't know, I mean, it wasn't, we, were, we weren't, um, this was not something we were um, sitting around thinking about doing, to be honest. It, 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 I, we were, we, we've, as Jim said, we've been concerned about Portage Place for all the obvious reasons. Um, we thought there might be a solution, there wasn't. The owners reached out, you know, after the last uh, attempt, um, uh, did not succeed, and and we got the d distinct impression from them that th th it was the end of the line. It was, you know, um, this is going to close, and uh, we know them well enough, I think, to know that wasn't some veiled threat. It was like, it was more of a, can you, do you have any ideas? Can you have? Is there anything you can think of? And we had talked about health as a part of True North Square briefly, you know, with Pan Am. It didn't work. It wasn't a fit wasn't enough parking it wasn't it just wasn't a fit so you know that conversation was the seed I think that you know went back and said well what about Portage Place and that one thing led to another and then um, and I honestly I've been on the periphery of this Jim's really been the one who's led it but what I gather that has been really encouraging is is the healthcare community not only not only their enthusiasm for the new the new capacity in space and in dialysis and imaging and in surgery, but I think they also really quickly grasped the impact that it could have being where it is, you know, providing um, community care, um, mental health and addiction support, all of the things that we desperately need right here. And, and so I think that's how it got some momentum and, and now here we are today. Do you think it's fair to say that doing nothing for you guys at this point just simply not an option? I think, you know, I, I think if you have an, an opportunity to do something or you, I have a hard time distinguishing between opportunity and obligation some days, you know, um, I, I don't know, like I don't want to, I don't mean to sound uh, overly altruistic here, but, you know, my father taught me long ago, you know, if you see a need, you know, if there's a need that, that then, then maybe there's an, you know, a, a, an adjacent opportunity with that. I, I I think I've had, as I said, I've had a front row seat to the need of our downtown for 22 years. And it's, uh, it's one step forward, two steps back. You know, we've made a lot of progress. We've got a lot more people living downtown. We've got a lot more commercial space, but we need more. We, you know, we need more momentum. So you got, it's kind of like you got, you got one of two choices, I think. I think, like you, go, you, you walk the other way or you say, well, we have the capacity or we have the the knowledge of how to, to do things like this, why wouldn't you? If and if not us, like I don't know. Like I, I would I guess we could wait for the next one to come around, but we got we got a pretty firm signal that there wasn't a next one right now. Um, and I couldn't in my mind's eye envision this place boarded up. I, I don't think anybody in the city want, would want to see that. So so I please I'm I'm not trying to sound like, you know, I'm I'm it, it, it I'd be repeating myself but um, like the gist of what you're saying is you're pretty sure it was going to close if nothing happened to redevelop it. Did you have any sense of how long that was that it, risk was going to come? It, it felt imminent to us, okay. you know. And and you don't you know you don't have to be a commercial real estate expert to walk through a space and see the amount of of uh, vacancy. 
and imagine what the costs of operating are, you know, and, 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 and quickly calculate this is just no longer viable. And so how long are they going to hold on? Does all this today mean that this is a foregone conclusion that, that uh, True North Real Estate will exercise its options? Well, I ho sure hope so. I mean, uh, this is a big announcement. I mean, uh, it, it, I would, would certainly expect that we would be exercising our, those options. That said, there's a lot of work to do, uh, Bartley. There's an, an awful lot of work to do. Um, but it's not, it's, it's not really anything more than what we've done in the past. And um, I think we've got very, in, very engaged partners in the healthcare community. Um, as I said, that's what's been really perhaps most uh, gratifying is the enthusiasm that they have for all that this represents. This may not be your ultimate or most important goal, but is there a profit to be made in this? Uh, you know, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privately invested uh, uh, development. Um, I don't think, um, you know, in totality, I don't expect uh, it's going to move the needle for us, um, you know, in a, in a material way. I, you know, we've got to invest private capital, so you would expect that uh, you'd be able to cover that. And, but, um, you know, I can say w with absolute uh, um, certainty that the investments we've made in, in, in what we've done uh, in downtown, all we've ever done is reinvest it in downtown. And, and that's, that's what we'll continue to do. But preventing this from becoming derelict and vacant does protect the value of your of your other considerable assets. Of course, but I think it protects the value of everything that, that exists downtown. The hydro building uh, is 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 less valuable if uh, if this thing were to close. Um, I, I don't know. I I think what most people don't really recognize about downtown because not everybody comes downtown, and and I think. When they do, they're they're a little bit alarmed, right? For those of us that are here all the time, it's sort of been a gradual descent, and so you don't you're 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 sort of desensitized to it. But if you come down, you haven't been here in a long time, you're like, wow, this is there's been a change here, and 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 I I, I think we're at an intersection again, you know, and which direction we want to choose here. Um, I have this picture in my mind of those storefronts, uh, those small buildings, which are currently mostly vacant. I have this vision uh, of, of them being occupied again, of there being coffee and, and, and bakeries and, and those kinds of things that, you know, when I was a kid, um, I, not to be overly nostalgic here, but I, when I turned 12, I was allowed to take the bus downtown, right, uh, by myself. Usually went with friends, but that was something we did. You went downtown, you went to, you went to the record store, you went to the, to the movie theater, and it was safe, and it was, you didn't, and, and, Maybe it's naive or maybe it's overly optimistic, but I, I like to think, I've seen examples of cities that have reclaimed themselves. And I've seen examples of cities that haven't. And once you slip further, it becomes almost in, impossible to reclaim. So what do you I, think it'll take to repopulate those storefront retail spaces that you speak about? More people living and, and more people, you know, coming here for, for, for respective services. I think you could imagine somebody comes here for dialysis or for imaging or whatever it might be. Uh, they're not, you know, some, they may take a bus, but I don't think so. You, I think, would think somebody would be driving them here and they're going to need, they're going to need something to do while they're here, right? Um, so I think there's a, 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 a lot of different retail opportunities that could, that people could take advantage of and, uh, and be close to this hub. Um, but we need more people we need more people, we need more affordable housing. And at the same time, as I tried to suggest, we're, we're a long way from home in terms of turning around a very, very serious crisis in, in terms of the number of people that are living unsheltered. Um, and that's another thing that I think most Winnipeggers are, are not fully understanding or appreciative of how many people every on any given night are, are living unsheltered. And that, um, that, is a, that has got to be advanced forward on a parallel set of tracks, it's, it's, it's more important than this project, in my opinion. I mean, I don't think we can have a healthy community if our downtown is not well, and, and our down, I, we, 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 we as a community cannot accept having 
anywhere from 15 to 2,000 people a night unsheltered. I, I just think that's, I think it's reprehensible. And um, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I, there, every city in North America ha has the problem. I've visited many of them. Uh, some are work, have made great gains, some have not. I think, as I said, we can be an example. Thank you guys very much for your time. Okay.